Okay, Bismillah, Salat, Wassalamu ala Rasulillah. Dear brothers and sisters, good evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's start our uh, third session today about oil and gas, introduction to oil and gas. Let's continue our uh, definition about the upstream and downstream and midstream. We started last lecture, more information about the upstream. We started to know more about exploration and production. We came to know the difference between the onshore and the offshore. Inshallah, we'll speak more details about the upstream. We'll speak about the upstream process sections, namely the wellheads, the manifold and gathering, separation, between storage and export, utility system. And we will go to the next step, which is the midstream. We'll speak about gas plant, gas composition or compression, pipeline, and LNG lubrication and regasification facilities. Then we will go to the last step, which is downstream. We'll speak about refining and petrochemical in brief. Starting with upstream, midstream, downstream terminology, again, refresh our memory. Because these three sectors, it is very important in oil and gas companies. All the companies they are divided in these three sectors. This is very important to refresh our memory, to remember all of the upstream definition, midstream definition, and downstream definition. So upstream again speaks about oil and gas exploration and production. We have, as you see here in the screen, we have offshore and we have onshore bomb jack. However, the midstream in the middle, they speak about the transportation and storage. Speak about transportation and storage. So the midstream is the mid cycle. In the downstream, the last cycle or last process, it is mainly for product distribution and usage. Product distribution and usage. And to refine the product to multiple products, this is will come in the refinery. And the distribution will be, as you can see, definitely in the gas station, for instance, or any other area for distribution, like bulk plant, for example. This is area for distribution. So the upstream, let's have some other terminology about the upstream process section. We will go through details in this section to know more about the upstream process sections. We will speak uh, more uh, uh, about the wellhead and uh, actually they are called pre-completion, the activities up to the producing the wellhead starting from drilling, casing, completion, and we'll hit this whole activity, they call it pre-completion, pre-completion. While the production itself, the facility, after they done the pre-completion activity with the welding, casing, everything about the drilling, they go to the next, which is production, they call it post-completion. So we have two definitions now we need to also remember. Pre-completion, it is mainly in drilling and the wellhead and the completion of the drilling area, exploration. After they finish, they go to production facility. And this production facility, it is post-completion, post-completion. So what is, what, what is the wellhead, which is actually the first step after exploration. What is the wellhead? Or they call it also another terminology in the oil and gas. They call it Christmas tree. They call it Christmas tree. So this is very important to remember this word. Christmas tree, this is how it looks. This is the wellhead. This is actually groups of valve. And we know before what's mean by valve. Valve, it is the open of device to control the flow, 
to either open the flow to allow the flow to pass or close it so that the flow will stop. It will not pass. So this is valve. So the wheel head actually is a group of valves, not only one valve. If you can see in the screen, this is one valve here, one valve there, one valve there. There is a group of valve. A group of valve, it will sit on the top of the reservoir, on the top of the well. On the top of the reservoir, this is group of valves. This is called the well head. So again, the well head is a group of valve manifold. This is will be set on the top of a platform, and this platform in the top of the reservoir well. So this is another picture of the well head. To be clear about this one, let's understand more uh, details. The people after uh, they extracted, for example, the natural gas, they allowed some petroleum or natural gas to flow out of the formation up to the surface. This process includes strengthening the well hole and casing to evaluate the pressure and temperature of the formation. So they install proper equipment to ensure an efficient flow of natural gas from the well. So the well flow is controlled with a shock. This shock is called shock valve, shock valve, this shock valve. So this shock valve, this is very important valve to control the flow. It is, uh, it's allowing very high pressure. So the flow in the well head, it will be with very high pressure and the, with very high flow. So they control it with a valve called shock valve, shock valve. So this is group of valves together. They put it and they control it by way of formation by understanding the flow requirement and the pressure requirement. This is, as I said, in the upstream only, the flow will be very high with very uh, high in flow and high in pressure as well. So they call it this group of valve a Christmas tree. They call it Christmas tree. So this Christmas tree, as I said, it's allow a number of operation, number of operations related to production and will work over. So this actually refers to various technologies for maintaining the well and improving the production capacity. So this group of valve actually, as I said, is controlling the production, is controlling the flow of the, of the, of the, of the, of the oil that comes it controls the pressure, it controls the distribution at the start. So it, 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 we cannot receive the flow immediately like this. We have to have a group of valves first to put on the uh, well reservoir to control it, to control in high pressure and high flow. This is another photo of the Christmas tree. This is how it looks more. This is a shock valve that I said, and this is a casing head. And this is some other group of valves that is also required to control the flow and the pressure. This is one example valve, it's called surface safety valve. It is mainly for safety. And I will explain what's mean by safety here. Safety means that if the pressure of the flow is above certain amount, so this valve will open for relief, for safety. So it will open automatically to relieve some pressure, some high pressure. So this is also one important valve to control the high pressure if it is above the capacity of the material of uh, designed in, in that uh, Christmas tree. So if the pressure instant comes very high immediately from the reservoir, so the safety valve will open to release some overpressure out of the system. So that if, if this not happen, if there is no safety valve, this system will be collapsed, will be uh, uh, immediately exploded because it cannot withstand the pressure that comes from the reservoir. 
it is designed for certain pressure. So if one limit or if there is a limit exceeds the design pressure, then the safety valve will open automatically to save the system. All right. This is uh, uh, how it looks the Christmas tree, and this is very important to understand why this group of valves is required at the first stage when we just receive the oil from the reservoir, from the well. This is another photo, real photo from the site. This is the Christmas tree, and this is the well head. So this is the well head here. And above what above the well head is the Christmas tree. After the finish the Christmas tree, there is many folds and gathering. Many folds and gathering. What that means? Actually, in the onshore, the individual well streams are brought into a main production facility over a network. A network of gathering of pipelines and manifold systems. So there is not only one pipe, there is one pipe here, and one pipe there, and one pipe there, and one pipe there, and one pipe there, there, and all of them are connected together to one header. This is called piping manifold. Manifold. So this is group of pipe. Everyone is connected to a connection from a source, and all of them are sitting up together in the wheel sets to give uh, certain production metering and leveling. This will allow you for equal distribution. If you want to have equal distribution, for example, if you have different customer and you want to distribute to each customer a certain amount equally, so you have to have this equal distribution. They call it manifold, manifold and gathering. So in each one, you will find a metering here. This is metering. Why you have metering? To know exactly what is the flow amount distributed to a certain customer for uh, for information and for invoicing and for selling. This is will be metering here on each of line for distribution to the customer. Again. This is, as I said, this is a uh, metering scale so that they can control the flow that comes after the well for equally distribution to the customers. After they finish the manifold and distribution, you know, still some separation is required. So you will go to the separation and why separation is required? Because as I said, some wells have pure gas. Maybe you are lucky if your well is a pure gas. So you can take the gas which is pure immediately to a gas treatment. You can immediately take the gas which is pure. You are lucky if your well comes with a pure gas. So you immediately will save a lot of cost. You don't need to do any separation. It is pure gas. So you will take the pure gas immediately to gas treatment for further processing. However, if the gas is not pure, what that means but not pure? It is mixing with water and oil, for example. So you want to have a separation first. And you use this kind of separation vessel or a separation drum or equipment to separate the gas from oil from water. You need to have a separation. How can you separate? By using this kind of equipment to separate the gas from oil from water. As I said in the previous lecture, there is some certain Facilities they call it JOSP. JOSP, G O S P. JOSP is mean gas oil separation plants. All right. There is very good questions now being asked in the chat room. Someone asked me, how can I know that gas is pure or not? It is very good questions. Thank you for that. 
Actually, the people know from analyzer. There is analyzer device, an instrument device, electronically. It is connected to the control system to analyze the stream that comes from the well. And this analyzer, it gives indication if this is pure gas or mix it with oil or water. So again, they use analyzer to analyze the flow that comes from the well. This analyzer, it gives them indication if this is pure oil or mix it with some other uh, material like oil, like gas or like uh, water. Okay. So let's know more details about the separation and how it works. Let's watch this video. So in this video that will open now, it will give you uh, a clear indication about how the vessel will work and how the separation will work. I think we should... Let me ensure that I am sharing my screen full so that everyone can see the video and I can share the sound as well. So I'm sharing a screen so that you can see the video. Explore a few solutions. Grammarly's suggestions catch when your tone might undermine your message and it offers suggestions. This module on three phase separators describes separator types and components principles of operation, and design procedures. Produced well fluids typically consist of varying amounts of oil, water, gas, and sediment. The first step in processing these fluids is to split them up into their individual components. This generally takes place at some type of separator. A three-phase separator uses gravity to separate produced well fluid into gas, oil, and water phases. Three-phase separators may be designed in either horizontal or vertical configurations. In a horizontal separator, fluid enters the vessel and hits an inlet diverter. The resulting sudden change in momentum provides the initial gross separation of liquid and vapor. The liquid collection section of the vessel must provide sufficient time for the oil and emulsion to form a layer or pad above the so here, uh, you can notice that when the flow enters the vessel, there is a divert, divert like wall obstacle just immediately after the opening of the flow. This is to divert, change the momentum of the flow. And the fluid comes mixing, mixture, right? It is oil, gas, and water. So when the flow will come, it will be distributed based on what? Based on, yes, it's molecular, it's viscosity. So it's the density. So based on its weight, molecular weight, the water, will be on the bottom because the motor have more molecular weight. And the gas will be on the top because the gas have less molecular weight, molecular weight. And the oil will be in between. So we, now you can easily separate the water from oil from gases. The gases, as I said, is lighter, so they can go up. The water are heavier. It will be on the bottom. The oil in between, so it will be in the middle. So let's continue watching the video. The free water. A weir maintains the oil level, while an interface controller maintains the water level. The oil spills over the top of the weir, and then a level controller, which operates the oil dump valve, controls its level. An interface level controller senses the height of the oil-water interface. This controller signals the water dump valve 
to release as much water from the vessel as is needed to maintain the oil water interface at design height. The gas flows horizontally and exits through a mist extractor to a pressure control valve which maintains constant vessel pressure. In a vertical three-phase separator, flow enters the vessel through the side. As in the horizontal separator, the inlet diverter separates the bulk of the gas. A downcomer is used to transmit the liquid through the oil-gas interface to keep from disturbing the oil skimming action. A chimney equalizes gas pressure between the lower section and the gas section. The spreader, or downcomer outlet, is located at the oil-water interface. From this point, as the oil rises, any free water separates out from the oil phase. The water droplets flow counter-current to the oil. Similarly, the water flows downward, and oil droplets trapped in the water phase rise counter-current to the water flow. Selection of a separator type is based primarily on gas handling requirements and space availability. A horizontal separator is normally more efficient at handling large volumes of gas, and because of its large interfacial areas, it has better phase separation capability. It does not handle solids as well as a vertical separator, and it requires more space. A vertical separator, on the other hand, has good solids handling capability requires far less space than a horizontal separator and has much better liquid surge capacity, but it is more difficult to service. Regardless of type, all three-phase separators have in common certain internal vessel components. Inlet diverters provide the initial gross separation by changing the flow direction as fluid enters the vessel. The deflector baffle, shown here, is one type of commonly used inlet diverter. Another is the cyclone inlet. Wave breakers limit the wave propagation that might otherwise occur in large horizontal vessels. Defoaming plates reduce foaming at the gas-liquid interface, which tends to occur when gas bubbles are liberated from the liquid. A vortex breaker keeps vortexes from developing when the liquid control valve is open, thus preventing gas from being drawn out of the vapor space and re-entrained in the liquid outlet. Mist extractors coalesce and collect small liquid drops from separated gas before the gas leaves the vessel. Potential operating problems in three-phase separators include foaming crude, paraffin buildup, sand accumulation, liquid carryover, gas blow-by, and formation of emulsions. Separators must be sized properly in order to avoid such problems. Design procedures require a thorough understanding of the separator operating principles and their relation to such variables as settling of the oil droplets, retention time, and droplet size. The text that accompanies this presentation contains the necessary formulas for designing a three-phase separator, together with guidelines and step-by-step -step design procedures for sizing and selecting a separator. The text also has tables of maximum allowable working pressures for various vessel diameters, along with example exercises with solutions. After viewing this introductory video, please follow the sequence outlined here. First, read the process explanation. Then, review the equipment description. Then, so uh, now he will go more details about how he can design the vessel, which is now more detailed than our point of uh, discussion. But what I just want to explain through this video that how the separation is works that you can see from the screen. This is separator is a simple device equipment. Either is horizontal, as he said in the video, or it can be designed vertical, vertical. So it can be horizontal or vertical. And as I see, as as I said, or as the video says that 
the, there is a divert here that can divert the flow, and then the flow will immediately, based on its momentum and molecular weight, will go through either light molecular weight, this is gases, go to the top, which is in the red color, and the heavy molecular weight, which is water, blue color, will go to the bottom. And then in the middle, the green color are the oil. It is these colors only for indication only. So it is not the main color of the material, but this is only for indication. And they use some kind of level control, they call it level transmittal. This is to know the level of each. Here, this is the level. To know the level of each fluid. So, for example, the level of water here in this dashed line, they can measure it from this level control. They know the maximum level of water and the minimum level. And now they can automatically open the valve to control the level of the water. So this is mainly the separation in principle as a basis, as a symbol uh, explanation. The next they can do is the metering storage and export. Metering storage and export. After they separate, they need to do the next step. So as you, as you know that most plants, they don't allow local gas storage, but oil is often stored before loading on a vessel, such as a shuttle tanker. They are taking the oil to a larger tanker terminal, for example. So the small shuttle tanker in the offshore building, they can take the oil to a larger tanker, more bigger, or a terminal. Or they can direct it to the crude car carrier itself. So mainly in the offshore production facility, there is no direct pipeline connection. Rely on the uh, crude storage in the base. So, so that they allow the shuttle tanker to offload about once per week. So then they need to have a metering station. This metering station, they allow the operation to monitor, manage the natural gas and oil exported from the production installation. So why do they have to have metering? To monitor and manage the natural gas extracted. So as I said, this natural gas or this oil extracted, they want to distribute it to different customers or maybe one customer, whatever, but they want to control it. They want to know how much they distribute, how much they transport, how much they will, uh, they will transfer. So this amount, how they control it, they use a metering skip, metering skip. So this metering skip or metering station to monitor and to manage the flow that comes out of the well after extraction. So this is required to measure the natural gas or oil, to measure the flow through the pipeline, through the flow, through the pipes, without any uh, embedding its in, uh, movement. So this is mainly how they make the metering. And this is photo here is basically about metering a skid here. And this is tanks here is expressing the storage tank. And this is storage tank. The storage nearby every storage tank, there is a metering area. So why? Because you are store, you need to store something you measure, something you control, right? For example, you have bank account and you have some money in your bank. This bank account is considered a storage, right? To store your money. But when you go to the account in the bank, the employee, the worker, he need to do what? He need to measure the money that he received from you before he got in the storage area. So he use a machine to count how much money you need to deposit in your bank account. This is very simple example. The same here for the oil and gas metering and storage. They use a metering 
instead of the account, the machine to to account to 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 know how much money they use the metering to know how much it flow. Then they put it in the account, which is a storage tank. This storage tank is for certain customer. This is, for example, this is for one employee, or one customer, or one client, one bigger company. This is for him, and this is the area, the storage tank for they know before they put it in the storage how much the flow or how much is the amount of oil or gas inside this storage tank. So this is also another photo of the metering skin, how they can how they cannot measure the amount of flow. It represents how they can measure the amount of flow. So they transfer here the ownership from a producer to a customer. Now I am I, I am a producer, I done my job. Now you are a customer, I will give you this amount, you will pay me money. So how can we calculate based, based on the metering volume, based on the uh, price uh, barrel uh, of the oil per barrel, it is certain price worldwide known. So give me the, the money, I give you the oil. I am the producer, I give you the oil, you give me the money. So how can we measure that? By using the metering skip or metering station. So this is to transfer from producer to a customer. This is a transfer method from producer to a customer using the metering device. So this actually typically, as, a, as you can see, the metering installation, it is consists of a number of meter runs so that one meter will not have to handle the full capacity range. It is associated uh, with the loop so that the meter accuracy can be tested and calibrated as well in regular intervals. Let's have some also information about utility systems. In oil and gas, it's not only hydrocarbon, oil, gas, so we have also other utilities required. So this utilities is required for the purpose of the process itself. For example, you need to have some uh, water, you need to have a cooling water to cool the flow. If you need to have flow is heated, for example, to, to be more uh, uh, distillated, you need to heat the flow. After you finish the heating, you need to cool again using cold water. So this cold water media is utility, is called utility. Plant air, for instance. Plant air is a utility. It is an air, but they call it plant air because this is required for certain devices like control valve. This control valve is a pneumatic device. Sometimes it works as a pneumatic, not motorized. It sometimes is also motorized using electrical source, but other types is pneumatic is used air source. So we need to have a plant air utility to feed the control valve uh, every time. So this kind of uh, utilities is required. Also, you need to have a, a, a steam. So why you need to have a steam? <coughs> because some of you know that to produce electricity, you need to have a power plant. And this power plant to be uh, produce electricity, you need to have a source of steam. So this steam actually is required to produce electricity. And this electricity and steam is quite kind of utilities. So all of these utilities and uh, in utility system is to support the process of oil and gas. It is not the main process, but it is for supporting the process. It is for supporting the process. So you need to have these utilities. It's, it is very important. It, it is not uh, something useless. It is very, very important, but not the main to produce oil and gas. But to have all of this factory and refining and the process and manufacturing works together, you need to have power source electricity, you need to have HVAC, the uh, heat, uh, ventilation, air conditioning, you need to have a steam to operate the, the power plant for electricity, you need to have cooling water to cool the 
the oil, if it is really at, at high temperature, you need to have also a plant air to operate the control valve if it is pneumatic operating the control valve. So you need to have this utility. So remember, in any oil and gas, there is a utility section. All those required. So now we finish mainly in the upstream. Let's go next to the midstream section. Okay. What is the midstream section? The midstream actually is, as I said, is mainly for transportation and storage. Is mainly for transportation and storage. For example, if you have here a gas plant, and this gas plant you need to transport, you use LNG tanker, for example. So if this LNG plant, LNG, what's energy? Liquefied natural gas. So LNG is liquefied natural gas. So if you have a gas, so you need to liquefy the gas. But what we mean by liquefying the gas is to transfer it from gas to liquid. So why they need to do so? For easy storage. So they transfer it, the gas, to liquid. So they call it liquefied natural gas. Why they need to do so? So that they can, uh, they can store more from the gases in a liquid, uh, in a liquid phase. Then they use the LNG tanker to carry out the liquefied natural gas. Then they will go to the next step that regassing again the gas plant. So this media in between the LNG tanker is transportation. So this is called midstream. What they call it? Midstream. So gas plant, for example, it is consist, as I said, of separation and various hydrocarbons and flows from pure natural gas to products that's known as pipeline quality. The major transportation pipelines usually impose restriction on the makeup of the natural gas that's allowed into pipeline. So before natural gas can be transported, it must be purified first. So before it is, uh, the natural gas is transported, it should be purified first. So purified means that it is pure gas. They need to confirm it is a pure gas. That's why we use this gas oil separation plant to separate the oil from the gas so that we can confirm or ensure or assure the gas is pure before what? Before transportation. Before transportation, this is the midstream. Transportation always is midstream, midstream. So before you go to the midstream, you have to have the gas pure. So using uh, using gas pure means that you have to have GOSP, which gas oil separation plants, to separate the oil from the gas. And as I said, the separation is called through the separation system. And this is really uh, very important to separate oil from gas from water as well. So this, for example, the very schematic diagram, a symbol from the well. This is the well head, and this is all. Oh, this is all the well head, and this is the rig, and this is all the well head. This is well head, and this is well head, and this is well head. This is oil rig. This is all on the land, so it is on shore, and this is a compression system, compression system. And then, if you need to have LNG. So it will should be liquefied natural gas. You should have an LNG plant. If you if you don't have a pure gas, considering this is pure gas, so it is compressed immediately to gas treatment. So it is pure. No need to do any separation. But if requires separation, you need to have a ghost in between to separate the gas from oil. Okay. What is gas compression? Gas compression, it requires if, because if you need to do gas oil separation plant, then you have to have what? Gas compression. Yes, please go ahead, Mr. Ford. 
If you have questions, you can ask. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, yeah. Yes, okay. Um, what I would like to know is that we talked about the utilities. Yeah. Uh, yes, and we talked about the, the gas plant. Yeah. Yeah. Are there the same thing or they are two things different? Say it again. Are they what? Are they the same thing? Are, uh, are are there um, are utilities part of a gas plant? Yes, always. You know, utilities is not uh, a standalone facility. Utilities is part from each facility. In oil and gas plant, if it is gas plant, uh, GOSB gas oil separation plant, LNG liquefied natural gas plant. Oil treatment, hydrocracker, refinery, any kind of facility in oil and gas you can imagine. There is always utility system there. So the system is not standalone system. It is not uh, a refinery. It's not a plant. No, utility system is a system inside the plant itself. So in each plant, you have to have the utility system. For example, in your uh, home, in your home, you need to cook some food, right? And to use in the kitchen, you have to have the utility in each in each kitchen. What's the utility you need? You need, you need to have the power source, right? Electricity, right? You need to have uh, the HVAC, for example, for ventilation. You need to have air conditioning for ventilation. You need to have water for cooking. Yes, you need to have water. So. So you need to have air, for example. So this oil called utility, it's required for the processing. And what's the processing you are doing? You are doing food. You are doing food in the kitchen. This is a processing. Similar in oil and gas, we are doing processing. To produce, instead of food, we are producing diesel, kerosene, naphtha, uh, benzene, the product we are producing. To produce oil, products in the refinery, we need utility always. We have to have water, we have to have plant air, we need to have a power source, electricity, we need to have a steam. This is required. Okay. okay. So, uh, do we, do we, is it uh, mandatory for a country that where here we found the, 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 the oil or the gas, is it mandatory to have this kind of, uh, of plant or the, the, the oil can be uh, uh, explored and, and transported in another country where they have this kind of uh, plan. Or it's mandatory we have it in this country. Very good questions. Very, very good questions. Uh, yeah. The answer is yes and no. Yes and no. Yes, if you have a pure gas, for example, this pure gas is ready for transportation. So we agree the mixed, mixed gas, we cannot immediately give it to customers, to another country, for example. If you are looking, if you are saying another country, that means this is customer now. It is different. So it is a customer for me. Country, and here is another country. The other country for me is a customer. Before I give him something, it should be pure. Why should be pure? Because I can measure, I can metering, I can uh, know uh, the amount of money. I, I give him some, something pure. For example, I give him crude oil. I give him uh, gas, natural gas. So this should be pure gas, should be pure oil. So this is first. So the answer is yes, I have to have in my country a plant to separate oil from gas for the purpose to, to transfer this to another country or another customer to give him a pure gas or a pure liquid. The other answer is no, if you want to do further, further refinery, for example. The oil is now pure, but this is enough for usage. You can use oil in your home, or you need LBG, you need gasoline, 
you need kerosene, you need diesel. So you need different product, right? So this different product can be done by other country. So the other country, they can receive the pure oil, which is crude oil. Then they can further use the refinery to distillate this received or received pure oil to different products. So I am as a country, I am a producer. No need for me to do further processing. No need. Enough for me to give you the pure oil and that's it. You, as a receiver, you can further do whatever you need. You, you will go to uh, your country, then you will build a, a refinery there, then you will uh, then produce multiple products from the crude oil I gave it to you. This is not mandatory. But I can also, as a country, as a producer, I can also, I can also have the refinery in my country. This will be also uh, more better because if I have a refinery, I can also export very uh, expensive product like gasoline. It will be very expensive. It will be good for economy. Instead of I am just to transport crude oil, which is very cheap, I can give you diesel, benzene, which is more expensive, so I can gain more money from you. But this is as a process, it's not mandatory, but as a possibility, yes, I can do so, uh, so process. Okay, thank you. Okay, you are so welcome. Okay, gas compression. Uh, I think we can take only a uh, two minute break or five minute break, then continue. What do you think? Okay, it's okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, it can take five minute break. Okay, let's continue our session. Now we'll go to uh, another system. It's called gas compression. Gas compression. Why we use gas compression? Why do I need to compress the gas? What's mean by gas compression, actually? Gas compression is required to increase the pressure of the gas. This is a purpose for gas compression system, to increase the pressure of the gas. Why I need to increase the pressure? Because it's required for transportation. So I am using this to transport, for transport. So imagine that I don't have enough pressure. So how can I transport something? For example, if you don't have enough power, how can you move from one location to another location? You need to have power, right? This يعني, clear example or simple example about pressure. Pressure is mainly related to force and area. But anyway, to have the flow transported or to allow the flow to move from one point to another point, it should have different in pressures. The pressure in point number one should be bigger than point number two, so that the flow can transfer from point number one to point number two. But what if I don't have pressure high? The flow will be slow or it will be stopped, so there is no movement, there is no transportation, I cannot transport, I cannot uh, transfer to any country, I cannot do anything without pressure. So the gas compression system is required to increase the pressure, to increase the pressure. So why the pressure is reduced? You know, actually from the well, the pressure it is normally very high, high pressure in the well head. And when it comes to the reservoir, for any further processing, like for example, separation, if I use to separate the oil from gas using GOSP, gas oil separation plant, the pressure will be reduced dramatically. It will be reduced. The separation, it reduces the pressure which already uh, have from the reservoir, from the oil. So I need to increase it again using what? Using gas compression system. So this is mainly the purpose for gas compression system is to increase the pressure of the flow after being decreased from the separation. It is already decreased. 
Let's watch a small video about the gas compression to know exactly how it works. Is a problem in the okay. okay for some reason it's not working so no problem i can share you after the uh, after the lecture i will show you this video it will give you an example about gas compression and how it works so let's go to the pipeline in the pipeline, this is required for transportation. So pipeline is required for what? Transportation. Since I already have the gas uh, increase the pressure, there is high pressure, then it is now time to transport. So I can now transport the gas or oil to a different country, a different facility, a different city using pipeline. This pipeline, it can be above ground, it can be underground, so underwater, they're like subsea system. So this is any way it can be done. And it will be huge uh, kilometers, this pipelines. It is not a small area or a small distance, maybe huge kilometers, maybe thousands of kilometers between country to country. And really the pipeline is very big. So the sizes and diameter of the pipe can be reached up to 48 inch, for instance. This is very big. So this is in the receiver of, uh, of pipeline. They uh, use this kind of huge uh, diameter pipeline to transfer the fluid and oil and gas through uh, between countries and between facilities. What, what is the LNG? As I said, it is liquefaction and regasification facility. As I said, the natural gas, which is pure gas, natural gas, is more than methane, CH4. CH4 is the methane, is carbon, one carbon and four hydrogen. One carbon and four hydrogen give me the methane, and this methane is the natural gas. And this natural gas is very important in the industry. They use it in the power plant, they use it in the home, they use it in the car, by the way. There is some car operating by natural gas. And instead of benzene, they use natural gas. So this natural gas is very important. And it's also it's very safe to the environment because it's only contain one C, one carbon and 4H. So for the environmental, it doesn't have a lot of exhaust, like the other benzene and diesel. They have a lot of exhaust and a lot of smoke that comes out of the processing using the other uh, hydrocarbon. But the natural gas, it is from its name, it is natural. So from the environment, it is very good to the environment. So it is better to use it, to use it uh, better than any other source of uh, of uh, petrol but it is gas at the end it is a gas so they actually cannot be compressed to liquid this natural gas is mainly methane cannot be compressed to liquid at normal ambient temperature in normal ambient temperature, we cannot compress this gas to liquid we cannot except for special uses such as compressing natural gas the only practical solution to long distance gas trans transportation, it's when the pipeline is not available to produce LNG at very low temperature, minus 162 degrees Celsius. This requires more cooling stages. This cooling actually consumes about 10% of the energy that's required to be transported. So to cool the natural gas to a temperature minus 162 degree is the only way to liquefied to be LNG, liquefied natural gas. And this is for 
distance gas transportation. If you have long distance gas transportation, you need to have this one. But it again consumes 10% of the energy that you want to transport. You have to do so. So this is actually energy carries are required for transportation. And this is at the end you have at the end when you, 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 you transport, at the end you have a regasification terminal that's heat again the LNG, which is very cool. It's heat again the LNG, which is very cool, to vaporization, to be vaporized, to be vapor for pipeline distribution. So now we have two steps. We are here and we need to distribute there. So in between, there is a long distance. This long distance requires the gas to be liquid. I cannot transfer very long distance gas only. It will not uh, work. It will not give me the amount that I need. So I need to transfer to liquid for easy transportation in long distance. To do it like this, I have to reduce the temperature of the gas up to minus 162 very low temperature then i can transfer it to liquid it become liquefied natural gas then it will be easy for transportation when i receive it at the destination then i need to return again the liquid to gas i use regasification facility i use it regasification facility then i need to heat again the liquid to be river, to be gas, then it will be easy for pipeline transportation or distribution. Now I finish the midstream with all its part, including the metering, storage, uh, liquefied natural gas, regasifications, uh, gas, GOSB, gas oil, uh separation plant uh, compression gas compression system this all in the midstream what about the downstream downstream as mr fall he said i am a country shall i need to continue the process or after i finish the midstream i can halas transport to another country and finish Yes, you can transport and finish. The downstream is not a mandatory. Downstream is to do refining, to do refining. Is it required to me to do a refining before I transport to country? No, no need, no need. You can do so to gain more money, it is up to you. But no need for refining for the sake of transportation to another customer or another country. So actually the refining the purpose of refining as a refinery is to produce, refine different range of products, not only one product. You will use the oil, for example, to give you multiple, multiple products. You will use a distillation, coal, and very to separate the crude into fractions. You will like frac, do a fraction in the oil. And in every level of this column, you will produce a different product, like gasoline, diesel, kerosene, nafta, everyone in its molecular. For example, the nafta is very heavy, so it will be in the bottom. The diesel is, is also heavy, but not so heavy, so it will be top of the nafta. The kerosene is very light, so it will be in the top of the column and so on. So you can have different fractionation, different distillation, using the distillation columns in producing many kind of products in oil and gas. And this is in the refinery only. This is not in other area. This is only in refinery. So as I told, this is really required for economy. If you need to increase the economy, you need to have more refinery manufacturing plants in the country so that they can produce very expensive product it can be used in the country it can be used also for export they can export this refined product they can gain more money from it the petrochemical the last 
topic about today is actually chemical from its name. It's not only petrol, it's not only hydrocarbon, is a mixture between chemical and hydrocarbon. It's a chemical derived from petroleum or natural gas. So this is not only the petrochemical. They are actually very uh, required nowadays in our chemical industry to have kind of petrochemical plant. Why? Because we need to produce thousands of chemical components. We need to have a lot of chemical components required in our life. The main actually feed stock of this chemical, uh, chemical component is the natural gas uh, condensate, like natural gas uh, liquid, which is liquefied natural gas, and other refinery uh, byproducts like naphtha, gasoline, benzene. These all petrochemical plants are divided in three main primary uh, groups. First group is olefins. olefins. This is included ethylene, propylene, butadiene. There are main sources of plastics like polyester, BBC, polyethylene. These kind of plastic is called in the sector olefins. This is the olefin sectors in the petrochemical industry. The other sector is called aromatics, like benzene, toluene, exolene, which also a source of plastics as well. Uh, and this is also scientific detrit and dyes. The other sector is science, this is gas or same gas. This is followed by steam reforming between methane and steam. So it is steam and methane to create a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. It is used to make ammonia. For example, in the filtration area, you need to use ammonia and methanol as a solvent and a chemical as well. So this uh, semi gas is also feedstock for other process such as feature touristic process, which produce the synthetic the diesel. So this is all petrochemical sectors, olefins, aromatics, sciences is gas. This is mainly required nowadays in our life, and it is very important also to use it from oil and gas industry. So let's try to move, uh, watch this last uh, video before we finish our lecture today. Working also. Hi, I'm Mark with Kimray. Today we're going to follow the Mark pipes on an oil and gas Today, well site, and then on an explain oil and gas well site, and then explain how each piece of equipment operates. This is a wellhead. This is where it all begins. The producer has drilled his well. In this case, has had to set a rod pump and a pumping unit in order to get the liquid to the surface. We'll follow the wellhead and go to the flow line to start the separation process of oil, water, and gas, which could be very near the equipment, or in some cases, over a mile in length before it gets to the equipment in order to be processed. So the flow line coming from the wellhead comes up to this point. All the oil, all the fluid, all the gas is coming right through this line to this two-phase vertical separator. Gas being lighter than liquid raises to the top of the vessel to where the natural gas breaks out of the well stream. Comes down this pipe and into a Kimray back pressure valve. The back pressure valve holds constant pressure on the vessel to allow it to move liquids to the next destination. Any gas over the set point will be sold down this line over to the meter run. The gas is measured and recorded, and then at this point, it is sold typically to an outside source or a midstream company. This is a, a cash register for the producer that allows him to, to make money off the resource that he's brought to the surface. 
A second valve that's related to the sales line is what we refer to as the flare valve. The flare valve is installed in case of maintenance on the sales line or in the wintertime a line could possibly freeze or further on down the line they may be tying in a new well and pressure backs up on the existing location. What the flare valve does is set at a higher set point than the sales valve. If that pressure is met then this valve opens up and sends all the gas that used to be sent to the atmosphere, it's now set to a combustor or a flare to be incinerated until the condition changes. The fluid that drops back into the bottom of the two-phase vertical separator is controlled by a liquid level controller, in this case, a float ball connected to a mechanical linkage to a dump valve. As the fluid rises, it lifts the float ball in the vessel, pushing down on the mechanical linkage, which then in turn opens the mechanical dump valve. The oil, the water, and any solids that might be in the liquid flow down this pipe into the dump line. And in this case, the dump line could go to a couple of places. It could be go to a final destination of a, of a storage tank. But in this case, the producer needs to further process the emulsion in order to make it sellable. This emulsion then will go down the dump line into another vessel, and that vessel is called a heater treater. The emulsion flows into the treater. At the very top of the treater is a baffle. At that baffle, the gas, which again is lighter than the liquid, breaks out of the top, comes down this pipe, comes down to here. One valve takes us to sales, the gas to sales. The other valve takes us to flare. Once the emulsion enters the heater treater and the gas breaks out of the top, there is a downcomer that funnels the fluid to the bottom of the treater. And at that point, the emulsion starts to break loose as a result of heat applied to the processed fluid. That processed fluid then relaxes its molecules and the oil and water separates more naturally by itself. The oil being lighter in gravity than the water will float on top of the water. As it reaches a set point, oil spills over comes down the downcomer pipe, and then you'll see another Kimray valve. The treater valve only controls the liquid in the downcomer pipe. It does not control the liquid inside the vessel. As the height in the downcomer pipe meets its desired level, the valve will come open, the liquid will leave the valve, go down the pipe, and into its final destination as crude oil into the storage tank, where the midstream company purchases crude oil from the producer and then is taken to a refinery for further processing. As the emulsion is being processed with the use of heat provided by the fire tube, more salt water will be produced. In order to control the level of salt water in the, the vessel, the vessel comes with what we refer to as a water siphon. The produced water then it goes up this pipe into what we call the siphon box or the weir box. There is a designated spillover point or a siphon nipple. As the water reaches that level, the water spills over, goes down this downcomer pipe. And again, the valve controls only the level in the downcomer pipe. As the liquid comes down the pipe, the valve will come open, will come down the pipe, and then we'll exit to either a fiberglass tank for storage or it will go to the water treatment plant on this location for further processing and then will be disposed of there. This is the recirculating line. It goes into the recirculating pump. From here it goes back to the inlet of the treater, runs through the whole treater again. So there's a line that we can bypass the separator, and then there's a line that we can bypass the treater, and then there's a line that we can bypass both of them. It's all done with valving. Okay. So 
the browser's uh, sister will finish. Let me know if you have any question so far in our lecture today uh, before we close. Any questions so far? The lecture is the session is uh, is easy now. Do you have any other comment? If you, you have one question, Mr. Fung, you are right. Yes, yes. Uh, it's not um, really a question, it's a, about the, the, the way uh, we, we heard you because uh, I think we, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of loss in quality. Um, and maybe next time you can use a, a, a headset with a um, small microphone like this one I have. Okay, no problem. Because they, yeah, we have a lot of loss in the quality. Okay, it's not uh, for me I I I I manage to understand, but I think for uh, some of but, my guides they have confident the last year. Okay. Kumba. Come <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah how, how are you, Monsieur? Yeah, I'm good. What about you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Good. But uh, uh, we, we, we understood. We understood. We understood. Uh, how separate uh, oil extracted? Good. Uh, yes, we, 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 we understand. Good. Uh, we uh, what separated the oil in the vessel? We have. Uh, uh, three step. Yeah. In in down we have the the water the water and middle oil and and up we have the the gas. Exactly. Correct. It's clear. Yes. Yeah, it's clear. Better. Don't in upstream process section we have a well head manufact and gathering. How to separate? We we, we understand. The 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 metering storage and export we we understand. Very good. And uh, both. Uh, both. The refining, the refining in petrochemical. But uh, what is uh, the, the, the difference of, uh, of uh, petrochemical and, and refining? I think uh, Mr. Sick is mainly for oil and gas, mainly for the oil, for the hydrocarbon not for chemical uh, uh, substance. For example, you have only uh, oil, you have gas. The oil is pure hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon means that <laughs> the molecules, it is contained of hydrogen and carbon. You know this hydrogen and carbon? You know that, right? Yes, all right. You know hydrogen and carbon? We will start with this one, right? It is clear for you. So let me component consists of hydrogen and carbon they call it hydrocarbon they call it hydrocarbon and this hydrocarbon is only in refining refining so the refining or refinery they use to refine the hydrocarbon uh, fluid like oil for example to different product different product like for example you need to produce kerosene you need to produce uh, gasoline, 
you need to produce diesel, you need to produce coke, you need to produce nafta. These all products, these all products, right? Yes, yes. How you can produce the product? You use the refinery to refine the product, refine from uh, distillation or from uh, traction to you have something solid, you need to cut it in pieces to refine it to be more pieces. So this is actually the refinery. They use a very huge tower column. By the way, we will explain this column in the next session in details, but I will give you now in advance idea. They use the column and this column, in every level, they put it down camera and trays and valves to separate the oil in each step. They do a distillation and refining and fractioning in the molecules of every uh, uh, product in the oil. So in every level, they can produce certain products. They can produce the nafta in the bottom, the kerosene will be in the top of the column. In the middle, they can have gasoline and diesel. So this is a refinery. However, the petrochemical is different industry. It is still downstream. It gives you product as well, but not hydrocarbon product. They will give you another kind of product that is related to chemical only, like uh, plastic, uh, and this kind of uh, you know uh, ammonia. This kind of product is, is is required for the industry. Is required for the for the for for our life, but it is not pure hydrocarbon. It has some other mixing plastic component or chemical, mainly chemical component. That is why they call it petrol chemical. It is from petrol and chemical. Okay, okay. It's clear. Thank you. You are so welcome. Most welcome. Thank you, Mr. Seth, for your question and comments so far. Mr. Amadou, do you have any question? Yes, yes, please. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Vegip, for the, this interesting lecture. You are so welcome. Uh, I just uh, want to, to know more about uh, valve, valve safety. Or safety valve. Safety valve. Safety valve. Very good yes. questions. Yes. Is it, is it used to, to seal the well? Uh, uh, if uh, there are any leak, any leak products or scape products, or is it used just to regulate the the, the well's pressure? No, regulate safety. They call it control valve or over uh, operating valve. They call it operating valve or control valve to regulate the flow. Regulate means, as you know to increase the flow, increase the pressure. This is called control. They can control the flow. They call it uh, control uh, flow control valve. They call it flow control valve if they need to increase the flow or decrease the flow. They can control the pressure. They call it pressure control valve. They increase the pressure or decrease the pressure. This is called the regulated valve. However, the safety valve that you ask about is not for regulation. It is for safety only. We was some uh, machine in our kitchen. I don't know if you have this or you, you know this one in your home or not, but some, uh, and, and some will use this, uh, our wives, she use this in cooking. Uh, actually, she, she use this safety valve. You will find the safety valve in the top of the cook machine in your kitchen. This, a small safety valve for the top to control what? To control the pressure. Because this cook machine is designed to withstand the certain pressure. It is heated, 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 heated. So the increased pressure, you have very high pressure. This is allows the food to be quickly, uh, quickly processed and quickly uh, cooked. So, this high pressure cook machine, they use a safety valve on the top of it. In the cover, you will notice this kind of safety valve on the top of it. Why? They, they remove some uh, 
pressure or overflow pressure. Relief, why they need to relieve? Because if you kept the cook machine with the high pressure and the 